Your Eminence, Archbishop Khajak Barsemian, Your Excellency, Ambassador Garen Zerian, Reverend Clergy, distinguished guests and friends. It is a joyful occasion for me to join you today on my first official visit to New York. Firstly, I would like to express my appreciation to my brother in Christ, His Eminence Archbishop Khajak Barsemian, you primate, for welcoming me here to the home of the Eastern Diocese of the Armenian Church and the beautiful edifice of St. Barton Cathedral, whose 45th anniversary we celebrated this year. The cathedral stands majestically as an Armenian beacon in the middle of a great city, a concrete manifestation of the sacrifice, commitment, and devotion of so many far-sighted benefactors and Armenian faithful who brick by brick created the reality out of a dream. It is exactly this kind of unwavering commitment and perseverance that the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem requires from the Armenian faithful in the diaspora if a meaningful Armenian presence in the Holy Land is to continue for succeeding generations. It is this important subject that I would like to address today. The Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem lies within the Armenian quarter of the Old City and covers one-sixth of the entire territory. It is built on historic Mount Zion, within the Patriarchate's imposing golden comp compound lies a small city within a city, including the St. James's Cathedral, two small churches, St. Toros, with a library of 4,000 valuable manuscripts, and the Church of the Archangels, the Carlos Gilbenkian Library, a printing press, actually the first printing press in the Holy Land, and bookstore, and Helen and Edward Mardigian Museum, the St. Sarkmanchat School and Playground, the seminary, the Patriarchate's administrative offices, a medical infirmary, and the residential quarters of the priests of the St. James Brotherhood. Adjacent to the compound is another small church, Holy Savior and the Armenian Cemetery. Jerusalem has been an important spiritual focal point for the entire world and not only for the thousands of Armenians who live in Israel and Jordan, but for those of our faithful people dispersed everywhere. Of course, the crown jewel of the Armenian presence in Jerusalem is the St. James Cathedral, housing the burial vault of the head of the Apostle St. James the Greater, called Kilkhatir, and the burial place under the main altar of St. James the Lesser, the first bishop of Christendom. Within the cathedral are priceless paintings, frescoes, and hotchkars dating back to 1150. I have mentioned all this not to provide a history lesson, but rather to emphasize the priceless legacy bequeathed to us through the centuries by our tenacious Armenian ancestors and pilgrims. It has been defended and protected through an, an unbroken succession of courageous patriarchs, clergy and faithful. In our turn on this earth, we are duty-bound to continue protecting and nurturing this great legacy. Until today, the Armenian Patriarchate in Jerusalem struggles to do just that with an unshakably committed but dwindling number of priests of the St. James Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. These priests carry out their twice daily worship services alongside essential administrative duties in and around the Patriarchate and play an active and central role in the life of Jerusalem as custodians of the holy places. 
As you may know, the Armenian Orthodox Church in Jerusalem is one of the three custodians of the holy places, the other two being the Catholic and the Greek Orthodox Churches. <coughs> These churches and their clergy are charged with serious responsibilities that have been handed down and safeguarded over the centuries at great sacrifice. Given the unpredictable exigencies of life in the Middle East, the Armenian Seminary in Jerusalem has found it difficult to increase the number of ordained clergy to help in these responsibilities. The traditional recruit recruitment of candidates for the priesthood from countries that proved to be a source in the past has become increasingly difficult. Right now, in the seminary, we have almost 40 students at various educational levels, ranging in age from 14 to 20 years. At the end of a student's theological education, he has the choice to become a celibate priest and join the ranks of the St. James Brotherhood. Unfortunately, most will not choose ordination and ultimately leave Jerusalem. The Patriarchate also has a sizable number of real estate holdings and several churches spread throughout Jerusalem and the outlying communities, Haifa, Jaffa, Tel Aviv, Bethlehem and Ramle, to name a few. Many left to us by Armenian pilgrims to the Holy Land. These valuable real properties need capable effective management and must be watchfully protected and maintained. Mm -hmm. With only 22 resident priests of the St. James Brotherhood shouldering the Patriarchate's daily affairs, including religious ministry to the faithful, it is clear that there is a notable shortage of manpower. Each day, the life of a priest of St. James Brotherhood begins at 6.30 a.m. with the cathedral's clanging church bell, the traditional call to prayer that resounds throughout the whole monastery. After the services and breakfast, the priests proceed to their individual responsibilities in the various entities of the monastery and the patriarchy teaching in the seminary, cathedral-related endeavors, the printing press, ecumenical liaison and meetings, custodial duties in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, or in rotation to celebrate divine liturgy in one of the other Armenian churches under our jurisdiction. This is only one aspect of maintaining a viable Armenian presence in Jerusalem. The everyday lives of our priests demand adherence to a continual and often grueling schedule, especially during the many feast days, church services, and religious commemorations held in accordance with the old Julian calendar. It is for this reason that the members of the Brotherhood have been known as Zimorial Order, enlisted to defend the rights of an ancient faith in an ancient land, ready even to sacrifice their lives if necessary. I go into these details because it seems that in recent years, the importance of Armenian Jerusalem and its meaning for the Armenian church and nation has become diluted or lost in the wider issues facing the global church. I can remember that many years ago, some of the most devoted benefactors and church activists of the Eastern Diocese were part of an independently incorporated group called Friends of the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem. The group's membership of blessed memory included Alex Manukian, Dadur Dadurian, Suren Pestian, Richard Gregory, and Dr. Pergui Sabajan. 
They all valued the importance of the Jerusalem Patriarchate's role in the Holy Land and shared a deep commitment to strengthening the Patriarchate in cooperation with the Patriarch. They provided significant financial and technical support, financial advice, and any other assistance as necessary for many decades. Unfortunately, throughout attrition, the, activi the activities of the Friends Group gradually dissipated and its important mission lost. It is one of my greatest desires that the Friends of the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem be resurrected under the name Knights of St. James, mm -hmm. drawing its membership from a new and committed generation ready to contribute some time and talent to supporting the Jerusalem Patriarchate. I am ready to assist in the, this process of reorganization in whatever way I can and encourage you to come forward and make your interest known if you wish to be part of this important group in your region. I strongly believe that this new Friends of or Knights group can play a major role in a project I hope to undertake, namely the badly needed renovation of Jerusalem's glorious St. James Armenian Cathedral, which dates back over 1,000 years. St. James Cathedral and Armenian Jerusalem are the precious gems in the crown of the Armenian Church, and the er eradication of our presence there must not be allowed to happen due to lack of historical knowledge, diverted attention, or just plain indifference. In this context, I think it's important to address one of the reasons why I think support for the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem has faltered. The controversies of the Patriarchate's long past history have served as an excuse for some to withhold their financial and moral support. It needs to be recognized that individuals come and go, mm -hmm. but foundations <coughs> and institutions remain. It is rather po pointless to punish a historic institution for the mistakes of individuals who passed into eternity many decades ago. But regretfully, for some, it is preferable to continue using this excuse rather than to assist an institution at the very heart of the Armenian nation's priceless heritage in the Holy Land. Our community worldwide not only has the financial resources, but also the professional expertise to impact the, the positive direction of Armenian Jerusalem. Financial help certainly has its role to play, particularly on the part of our large, notable Armenian organizations and generous Armenian benefactors who have the means to make a difference. But money alone is not enough. We also speak of more human involvement by Armenian engineers and architects, planners and strategists, lawyers and teachers, scholars and specialists in fields such as preservation, computer technology, real estate management, and public relations. My message to you, indeed my strong appeal to you is quite simple. Help us by utilizing your personal knowledge and expertise for the benefit of Armenian Jerusalem. Perhaps come to Jerusalem for an extended stay, even a month or two, to help make a positive difference. You might ask, how may I do this? My answer gives a simple example. Do you think you have energy, talent, and knowledge to share? Then I invite you to come to Jerusalem as a professional steward to give a month or two of your life in the voluntary service of the patriarchy. We can provide you with modest accommodations, nothing fancy, but you will be giving yourself a unique opportunity to achieve something for your church and indeed 
for yourself. Let me assure you that in doing so, you will receive much more than you will give and will return home forever changed as an individual. Our Armenian community in Jerusalem is a small and relatively isolated one and exists within the complex mosaic of the host country. Its clannish and traditional existence has served as a type of protection in the past, but in order to survive and grow in a very changed world, we need to build on those ancient traditions by harmonizing them with more open, innovative, and modern methods. The collective and varied expertise of our people dispersed throughout the globe can bring a uniquely Armenian perspective to our success and longevity in the Holy Land. Some of these talented Armenian individuals from the United States who have spent time in Jerusalem in recent years have successfully contributed to curriculum development in the St. Akmanchat School, the English Public Information Initiatives of the Patriarchate, and the modernization of the Gulbengian Library. But so much more can and must be done. In January, I will be welcoming to, to Jerusalem a group of pilgrims from the Holy Trinity Parish in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Meaningful and educational pilgrimages are invaluable in familiarizing our faithful, particularly the youth, with the history and mission of the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem in the Holy Land. I would encourage each and every parish in the diocese to organize similar pilgrimages as a tool for Armenians of all ages to gain a wider appreciation of their heritage in the part of the world. Father Martyros Chevian has played a great and much appreciated role in this endeavor. If there is one thought that I hope you will take away from my visit, may it be this. I and all the members of the St. James Brotherhood in Jerusalem have pledged our lives to our Lord to serve the needs of our beloved Church and her faithful. But we are unable to do it alone. We are clergymen, not businessmen, or industrial professionals, and we serve God and the Church under very difficult circumstances in a politically charged and geographically contentious area of the world. It is a penetrating reality that we need the active presence, input, and professional acumen of our global Armenian community to ensure the prosperity and longevity of our ancestors' legacy in Armenian Jerusalem. We cannot risk losing this legacy in our time. We therefore ask each and every one of you to think about bringing your personal and positive efforts to bear in whatever way you can to help Armenian Jerusalem. In doing so, you will not only enjoy a unique personal odyssey, but will also become an eternal part of your ancient church's history, present and future. It is something you will never forget. I leave you today by quoting a revised version of an invocation heard among the diaspora Jewish faithful who say, next year in Jerusalem. <laughs> and I say, next year in Armenian Jerusalem. <laughs> May God bless you all. Yeah, yeah. And I look forward to seeing you.